You could be in the lounge room. You could be in your kitchen. You, you could be in your PJs. You could be at the park outside of the community, wherever you are. You could be having a bra, Zico. You know, because right. this is this is a day. It's a good day to have a bra. Yes, always the same kind of Monday at Chisinyama. Yes. 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 That's right. Some people know what I'm talking about. But anyway, we have. <laughs> The big announcement today. I get today is the day for the big announcement. We are so excited for today. And in I'm just so excited, you know, that let us know in the chat. Actually, yes. let us know in the chat. Let us know. What you think the big yes. announcement is. You let know. us know where you're watching from. Let us know what you think the and big announcement is. And if you get it is. right, you will find out the big announcement in a few minutes for free. Ooh. Okay, but hey, if you are tuning in from radio, <laughs> yes. we love you, okay? We love you. And like, we think it's awesome that you are yes. tuning in. But seriously, Aggie, they're going to hear the big announcement in a few minutes. Yes, they and will. And so stick around. It's going to be awesome. We've all been waiting. I'm so excited to hear the big announcement. Are you Are you going to dance? What are you going to I do with the just, fine arts? I might just break it down. Okay. Who knows? I, okay, that would be... What, what are you going to do? I'm just going to do one of these. Oh, okay, okay. That's that cool. A, yeah. Yeah, that wow. might be cool. Yeah. But anyway, we also do have <laughs> kids on the line. Okay? Yes, we do. So parents, your kids can tune in. They can have some fun and they can also learn about Jesus. And so don't While forget. you're enjoying the service, yes. they can just be in the other room watching kids on the line. Yeah. You can enjoy it in peace. But we do have kids on the line and we're so excited for today. Thank you so much for joining us and get ready for the service. Yeah. Here we bye. go. Hey, welcome everybody to Church on the Line today. We have a very, very, very special Sunday. Yes, we special do. Special announcement. Yeah. Today it's happening. <laughs> And we're all excited about it. And you probably want to know what it is right now, but we're going to build the suspense where well, there's a few things we're going to talk about leading up to our special announcement, leading into our Heart for the House miracle offering, just encouraging you to be prayed up, yeah. believing God for Amen. miracles. So many exciting things happening, but right now, leading into this special Sunday, we're going to worship God together and allow the Spirit of God to lift Amen. our spirits with a beautiful song. So why don't you pray for us? Amen. So come on, church, let's pray together. Father, we thank You for this significant day. And Lord, I pray that for every um, person in our church today, that they, there would be a deposit of Your Spirit. Lord, faith would come into our hearts. Lord, that You would enlarge and strengthen us today, Father. And Lord, I thank You that we get to worship You. We get to lift up the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray whatever, whatever space people are in, that they will sense and know the presence and the power of God in their life today. In Jesus' Name. And everybody said together, Amen. Be blessed, church. Amen.
How amazing was it to worship together as a church family? What powerful worship we've just received. And right now, we're going to come around some good reports. And my wife's got some good reports with her right here that we're going to read out in just a few seconds. But we do want to let you know, hey, if you do have a good report, something amazing that is happening in your world, God has broken through or He's done something powerful, let us know. On the screen there, we actually have a praise report um, button that you can press uh, to let us know what's happening. I think it always adds so much faith if everyone in our church knows how God is moving in your world and in your life. And so, babe, you have some good reports yes, right there. Why don't you read I do. Uh, okay. a few? The first one is from, my, from Wahiba from Century City. And she says, I would like to praise God. My husband was unemployed for two years and now he has a job. God's timing is always perfect. Come on. Okay, I love that. That's this. awesome. It's so but exciting. I've got another one from Miranda, all the way from Wunderboom. And she said, I'd like to thank our church for the amazing courses that we have the privilege to do. It has such a positive impact on us and equips us to grow and impact others around us. And she ends up saying, and they are free. Come on. <laughs> wow. That if is... you didn't know, we have a whole bunch of equipped courses that, you know, we, we run every single week to help people in different areas of life. And so that is amazing. Yes. She says that it's, it's helped us so much. Come which on. Is, which is incredible. And next we have a praise report from Blessing all the way from Bromfontein. And it says, I'm so grateful that God healed my mom's back. Someone from the Hillsong team called and prayed with me. Thank you so much for standing in prayer with me. Mom says thank you so much for standing in prayer with us. She has no more back pain. Come okay? on. I love that. I love hearing. We need to have a praise go- break yes, for that right okay. now. Like, woo! Yes, I love <laughs> this. Like, I love that God is still healing people in the season. And it's just incredible, right, Zika? 100%. Right, Aggie? Yes. <laughs> yes. Come on. Well, hey, we are going to come around our prayer requests right now and we're going to pray in the service and we are going to pray over your needs and we know there's so many people going through so many things in this season and as a a church, we're not going to sit back. We are going to pray and we're going to believe that God is going to shift things in your situation. And so once again, if you do have a prayer request, there is a button on our screen over there you can press and let us know if you're going through something. Uh, We don't want anybody. We don't want you to go through your situation alone. We have an amazing team at church, amazing pastors that want to help you through it and want to pray with you. And so if you want to put your details in there, you can actually do that. Um, But right now, we're going to pray. And so why don't you stretch your hand out to the screen wherever you are. Why don't you add your faith from your lounge or from your kitchen and we are going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for today. We thank you for what you're doing, God. And we pray that you would move in every single situation, God. We bring our request, God, whatever we're going through, God, our pain, our hurt, God, our insufficiency, we bring that to you right now, God. And we ask you to move powerfully. We know, God, that you haven't gone to sleep in this season. You are not on lockdown in this season. You aren't quarantined in this season. You are still doing amazing things. And so we thank you for what you're doing. And we bring these needs to you. And we ask that you would come through God. We know that you are the God that can do exceedingly, abundantly and above what we could ask, think or imagine. And so we thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus mighty name. And everybody said together, Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. It's going to be awesome. Well, right now, yes. we are going to come around our giving. And, um, and we have Bianca Mensink, who is our Centurion location pastor. Yes. And she's going to be sharing around our tithes and offerings today. And so over to you, Bianca. Hello, incredible church family. Wasn't worship absolutely beautiful? And I know I am so grateful that we still get to honour God with our worship on a Sunday as we join in for church on the line, as I'm sure you are as well. But hey, speaking about honour, you know, the Bible tells us to honour God in many different ways, with our bodies, with our minds, with our thoughts, with our decisions, with our worship. But I actually want to encourage us around another thought of honour today as we speak about our giving, our generosity towards the heart and the house of God. Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10, God actually instructs us to honour Him like this. He says, Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to the overflowing, come on, and your vats will brim over with new wine. I wonder, have you ever thought about why God actually asks us to honour Him with something seemingly external like money, the seed in your pocket. 
In Proverbs 23, verse 7, we actually get an insight into this question. And it says this, it says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Or as a man believes on the inside, so will he experience on the outside. You know, church, I believe that our lives on the inside are deeply connected to the lives that we live on the outside and vice versa. And I believe that God cares about our lives on the outside, our natural lives. He knows that we need things like money and resources to live. But I know that He actually understands that there's a deep connection between our lives on the outside and that it will ultimately affect the lives that we live on the inside. And our lives on the inside will affect the life that we live on the outside because ultimately we are called to honour God with everything from the inside out. Do you remember that scripture I read in the beginning? Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. It said, Honour the Lord with everything, with your first fruits, so that what? So that your bonds will be filled to the overflowing. I actually want to encourage us today as we give, as we honour God. Why don't we put Him first from the inside out? And I believe that we're going to see an overflow in our lives. In Jesus' name. Well, I'd love to pray for us. But before I do, I want to encourage you. There's some awesome ways to give on the screen. So why don't you make use of that? And why don't we pray together today? Father, I thank you for every gift and every giver, for the seed that is going to go into the ground of your incredible church and make a difference in our world. God, I thank you that as we honour you from the inside out, you're going to do miraculous things in this season. And we give you all the honour, all the glory and all the praise. Come on. And everybody said together, amen and amen. Well, On the topic of honour, we're going to go to our gap of gratitude in just a moment. So why don't you have a think about someone that you can honour today, maybe a friend, a family member, someone you love. Why don't you text them, call them, drop them a note, let them know how much you appreciate them. So we're going to go straight through to the gap of gratitude in three, two, one. It is our Heart for the House Miracle Offering season and uh, we're talking all about that. We're encouraging everybody who's part of our church to contribute towards that, even in the middle of this lockdown COVID season. We're believing for miracles uh, in the lives of those who contribute and give and sacrifice and in our church we're believing for miracles. But maybe you want to explain to people, uh, you know, what Heart for the House is. Miracle Offerings all about? Well, Church, this is always, always a very significant and special Sunday. I call it a sacred Sunday in our church and it always is that. And I think even this year, it's more so um, a sacred Sunday. It's a an offering that we take as a church once a year and it's over and above our normal tithe and offering. And it actually is an offering that we bring We bring it to the Lord and it goes towards establishing the vision of church within the continent of Africa. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that as the service goes on, which is super exciting. And so as we come to our Heart for the House season, I want to encourage every one of us to do four things. We're going to pray, really pray about what we can, what we're going to bring. I know I'm praying. I was praying this morning about what I'm going to be bringing to this. What um, we're going to be bringing. We're married as a family, Mm. what we are going to be bringing. Um, And then we're going to commit to bringing that. And then we're going to plan how we're going to do it. Um, And then we are going to follow through and really bring that offering to the Lord. And I do feel the temptation is always to, in this year, is to withhold and And pull back. And to pull back. Fearful. Yeah, and I just rather than continuing yeah. to trust God, and we understand everyone's in different seasons, different seasons, and situations, different phases. But we're still trusting God. We still have yeah. big vision in this season. And it's never about um, equal giving. Equal, it's, yeah, it's, it's never about, about equal, equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. And yeah. I love that thought because not everybody can do the large amounts, but everyone can do something. Yeah. And I think it, that's the beauty of a church: is everyone bringing what they can bring, and together, that's very, very significant. Yeah, and so first thing I want to say as we consider this big vision and we lead into uh, our our special announcement (laughs) that we've got coming up, we have a big vision for Africa. And obviously our half of the house giving is sowing into that, contributing into that. 
And in this season, God has really been stirring our hearts and really been challenging us to keep dreaming big, uh, to not let our, our eyes slip down, to, to not let fear overwhelm us and to not, not hold back when it comes to vision yeah. for what God's called us to. Amazing. And so the first thing I want to say to everybody, and I'm really excited about this, yeah. is we have a big vision for Africa in a sense, you could call it the 50-50 vision. We are believing, and I want to say it to our whole church, I want you all to hear it, I want you all to catch it, yeah. is that we are believing in the seasons to come, we will establish 50 churches in the 50 most influential cities yeah. in Africa, and we're believing there'll be 5,000 people in each one of those locations. Amazing. That's 250,000 <laughs> people in church yeah. across the continent. And so really what we're saying today is we are no longer Hillsong South Africa. We are Hillsong Africa. Yeah. That's who we are and that's what we are becoming and yeah. that's what we are growing into and that's what we're believing yes. to, uh, to establish. A church that is building a nation, but not just a nation. We believe God's calling us to build a continent. We've already got things established in Nairobi. Yeah. We're already getting going in Mauritius. And we believe that God is going to open further doors right across the continent of Africa yeah. for us to establish church. Can, it's very exciting. No, it's amazing. I, yeah. Can I actually read a scripture? It says in Psalm 107, Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Here's why. He's better than anyone could ever imagine. How amazing is that? He's better than anyone could ever imagine. Yes, He's always loving and kind and faithful. His faithful love never ends. So go ahead, let everybody know it. <laughs> Tell the world how He has broken through and delivered you from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world and has set us free to be His very own. I love that scripture. It says, tell the world how He has broken through for you. And the reason we're gonna build 50 churches in 50 cities, reaching 5,000 people, it's because we've got a responsibility to tell the world of a love of a Saviour. Yeah. He's better than we can even imagine. And that is what we wanna do. We wanna take the good news and the love of Jesus as far and as wide as we possibly can. And I believe that's our next step. And um, I believe what God has planned for the continent is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and so we've got a special announcement yeah. about this. Um, and, and in order to do this, it's a 50-50 vision. God's really stirred it in our heart. God's really said, come on, yeah. we're going to go for this. You know, let's take a step of faith. Our giving is helping us to establish this. We're already on this journey. But in order to do this, we're going to reach and we're going to build. We've got to reach the continent yeah. and we've got to build uh, great leaders, great people who can lead these various churches, ministries as everything yeah. moves forward. And so there's two parts to that. And so right now I'm going to interview Lawrence Kruger, who is a key part of our team. And we're going to talk a little bit about reaching and building. And then we have our special announcement. Well, I'm here with Lawrence Kruger, Lawrence, who has been part of our church basically since we started and is a key part of our team, overseeing so much of our operations and plans for expansion. And so talking about this big vision we have, this 50-50 vision across the continent, Hillsong Africa, 50 churches in 50 most influential cities across the continent. Uh, Lawrence, you've been doing some research on this. Yep. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how do we go about this and what's going on in the continent right now? I mean, I want to maybe start by saying like there are a lot of great churches in Africa already. Yes. But as we've been speaking to leaders and people in our, in, in, on the continent, they've just been saying, well, there's really a place mm. for a church like ours in the continent mm. as well. So, mm. so at the moment in Africa, um, it's estimated that there's 1.35 billion people living on the continent. 1.35 billion people. Right now, right now, 2020. across the continent of Africa. Yes. Okay. Now, that's that's a lot of people to reach. Yes, exactly. And um, and of that 1.35 billion, 46 percent are under the age of 18. So it's a young population. Wow. It's so a, we're we're basically saying almost 50 percent is 18 or under. 18 or under. So it's yeah. such a young population, which isn't like the rest of the world. The rest of the world is aging. It's an aging population, But Africa yeah. is young yep. and therefore full of potential. Uh, and we want to be part of 
unlocking that potential. Yeah. And we believe the church plays a significant role in that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. A- absolutely. And then, and then even better is actually that fifty percent of that population is already urbanized. So right. people that are living in cities, close to cities. So I mean, it's it's just it's just great that we are going to reach people mm. in cities. That's mm. what, that's what we're going to go after. Mm. And um, already fifty percent of people in Africa live in and urbanized in those urbanized regions. urbanized areas. And so for us, we're saying, okay, in order to do this, the two words we're looking at is reach and build. We want yeah. to reach yeah. into the continent and then we want to build the lives of people yeah. to be part of our church and, and, and leadership and all of that. So, yeah. yeah, so reaching, you know, what's going on? How, how can we go about that? I know we're talking radio, television, those kind of things. Yep. Um, I mean... R- I would just I would just say with, with regards to reaching Africa is also ex- growing exponentially as a continent. Yes. So um, they estimate that in eight years from now there's going to be over four billion people in Africa. So four billion. Four billion. So it's going to practically triple. Triple in in eighty years. In eighty time. years, yeah. So there's a huge opportunity, for, a huge responsibility for the church to reach for all yeah. of us. Yeah. And yeah. that's why we've got to understand what we're doing isn't just for now and our giving isn't just for now, it's yep. for the future. Yep. It's for what we believe Africa can look like if yep. we all play our part yep. as the church. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, wow. so if we're looking at, um, you know, online church or church on the line has given us an opportunity to really look at, you know, who is watching in on the continent of Africa. We've reached further than we ever have. A- because people aren't just coming to our locations. We're kind of, in a sense, going to them. Yeah. And anyone can watch church online, on the yeah. line, from yeah. wherever they are, hi to, uh, to wherever you're watching us from. But yeah. we've noticed that across the continent of Africa, there are people, a whole lot of people who are yeah. linking in and joining us for yeah. Sunday service. That's going to enable us to actually, you know, start launching churches in those locations. Yeah, when we already have people who are joining us. Yeah. So, for example, in Durban, we yep. actually haven't launched a official gathering, but we already have a Durban community. And uh, so when the lockdown's over, we'll launch Durban Church. But there's already people there and we're seeing this in other parts of Africa. Yeah, like Luanda, Kinshasa, Kigali, Kampala, Dar es Salaam, Addis Ababa. Wow. And in Tripoli, uh, Lusaka. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just fascinating. Wow. What, what, wow. How, how the seasons helped us to actually reach more yeah. people. So in, in some ways, this season has been a negative because we haven't been able to gather, but in other ways, it has made us look at how we expand our reach. We're looking at radio. Yep. Yeah. Tell us a bit about what our plan is there. Yeah. So Hillsong Africa Radio, we launched it uh a few weeks ago, kind of a soft launch with a sisterhood. Mm. And at the moment, we have our Sunday services running on yeah. Hillsong Africa Radio. And actually, last week, we received our licensing to, oh, wow. to, to go full-blown Hillsong Africa Radio. And the reason why, uh, possible, we believe radio is, is, is important, if, if we look at South Africa alone, um, close to 40 million people have access to radio. Yes. And of... You know, most of those people listen to up to 20 hours of radio mm. every day. So Wow. It's, it, and it's obviously cheaper. Data costs are expensive. So yep. radio is a much cheaper way of communicating, of getting the word out there, of reaching people. Yep, yep. And we want to get teaching out there. We want to, we want to look at uh, messages in, in local languages, languages and yeah. dialects yeah. and uh, in order to really reach people effectively. So they're all part of what the plan is as we move forward. And we wouldn't probably have been stepping into that the way we are if it hadn't been for this season. So giving through half of the house is going to help us to continue to grow in what we're doing through radio. And uh, before we may have an actual congregation, we could already have impact, have influence, be reaching people, seeing people come to know Jesus, connecting into our greater church family through radio. And then television... Uh, we're looking at opportunities there as well. Yep. Uh, Christmas Spectacular, for example. It's going to be on TV. We're, that's our goal. Yeah. Uh, we've, <clears throat> we've gone, we probably can't do it as we have done in the past. We will in the future, but probably this year we won't be able to have the gathering. So we're going, well, let's get our Christmas Spectacular on TV. Yep. 
Uh, there's a cost to that, but we want to put a production together. We're believing to get it on Free to Air TV. Yes. Uh, to do a beautiful Christmas presentation that goes across Africa again. Absolutely. And uh, we'll probably, I mean, we will no doubt reach more people. So we're using these tools which were there before, but we weren't putting the emphasis, the resource behind them that we are now. And yeah. we'll continue to do uh, as lockdown eases and as we can yeah. gather. It's our yeah. way of reaching into the continent. Yeah. I, I know, I just read a whole lot of stats, but um, just thinking about it, that every single number actually represents a person. Yes. It represents a family. It yes. represents a future family. It represents, so it's just, it's just really exciting that we actually are able to embark on this mm. journey as a church, and it mm. started right here, obviously, with Pastor Brian and Bobby, but in Cape Town, and from Cape mm. Town, we're gonna reach the rest of the continent, mm. so I'm really yeah. excited. We're very excited, and so how do we do this, this 50-50 vision? Well, we've gotta reach, we've gotta get across into Africa, radio, TV, media. We're gonna put more resource, more investment into that, and believe our reach is gonna grow there, and then we've gotta build. Uh, how are we going to build the lives of people? How are we going to build leaders? Well, that is what our very special announcement is all about. And here we go. You ready for it? I hope you are, uh, because we are right now revealing what this special announcement, part of our strategy for reaching and impacting and building the church to build the continent of Africa. Here it is. Get ready. I'm excited. Song South Africa, there's great things ahead for you. I love the vision of Pastor Phil, Lucinda, and we're very excited, our church globally, that our third international campus for Hillsong College is going to be born right there in South Africa. Well, Phil and Lucinda are just such incredible leaders, and so finally to have the opportunity to come alongside them and help continue to raise, equip and empower young leaders. I know that what we're able to accomplish in and through Hillsong College is not only about a nation, but it's about a continent. And I believe for that reason, I cannot be more excited for all that God has ahead for us, both as a church and as a college in Jesus' name. It's just a great inspiration to me to think that people from all over Africa will be able to come to college on the African continent and get the spirit and the teaching and the academic standard of Hillsong College preparing you for ministry. That's what we're about, seeing everybody become who God called them to be. So it's a big day, it's a big announcement, and you never know, maybe this is for you. Well, guys, there we go. The news is out. Amazing. We are launching <laughs> Hillsong College Africa. Africa. And uh, I couldn't be more excited about it. Yeah, look, it's a huge God vision. We, uh, we are not underestimating uh, what this is going to require, <laughs> but it's all about reaching and building. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about reaching through radio, through uh, opportunities on television, media, things like that. But then building, we have to be building the lives of people. And Hillsong yeah. College Africa, I believe, is going to play. We believe is going to yes. play a huge part in building the lives <coughs> of this amazing generation of African leaders. It is going to be representative uh, of the, the continent of Africa uh, developing leaders that are going to impact the continent yeah. and, and build amazing churches and build nations. And 
I don't even know if many of you know this, but our vision statement as a church is to build a large Christ-centred, Bible-based church, changing mindsets and empowering people to lead and impact in every, every sphere, sphere of, of life. life. And yeah. So we are super excited because we believe this is going to be the next step in taking us forward. And we're all about reaching um, as many people as we can, changing their mindsets, empowering them and sending them wherever God has placed them. Uh, yeah. This is something that I've actually been talking to Pastor Brian about uh, for the last 12 months. Uh, so way before the pandemic, way before, uh, you know, all that's been mm. going on, 12 months ago, we sat at lunch uh, in the middle of Hillsong yeah. Conference last year in Sydney and Pastor Brian said to me, hey, what do you think about college in Africa? And so for the last 12 months, we've been talking about it. We've been planning what that would look like. And right Amazing. now, we just felt in our hearts as we're sharing this big vision, now is the time to put a stake in the ground and say, this is what we're establishing. And as you heard from Pastor Brian, he's super excited about it. And right now we have uh, the, well, the executive vice president. I mean, you could call him the guy in charge of Hillsong College, uh, Lee Burns. And uh, I know he is very, very excited about this uh, expansion of the college vision. So, uh, Lee, we just wanted to chat to you as we're making this announcement and just hear from you. How are you feeling about this? Phil, I could not be more excited. I, I think, you know, you, you, you said it beautifully when it comes to raising young leaders that will build amazing, God-glorifying churches that will reach and influence not only a nation but a continent. I, I couldn't be more excited for the vision. There's a lot of work ahead, but I honestly believe that... Uh, Exciting days ahead for us, exciting days ahead for the church. Part of Brian's, the church that I now see, is a world-class yeah. college. And we believe that this college, uh, Hillsong Africa College, is going to be world-class. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take us time to establish that and get it going. We want to have the main focus of this college actually in Johannesburg. We are going to have a, a location for it in Cape Town where, uh, you know, we've got a lot more infrastructure, but we're really focusing on Johannesburg with this college because we know that this is probably the most influential city in Africa. It's uh, easier for other, uh, you know, people from other African nations to get to Johannesburg. And so what is, you know, if, if you go in your heart, what do you desire to see come out of this? Uh, as we as we get it going, you know, where, where, where are you excited about it? The one thing that I love the most is seeing young lives come into college not knowing what, you know, what God's called them to. Seeing young, you know, men and women coming in going, what is it that God's got on my life? And then they get into the college environment and they think that God's called them to one thing, but then all of a sudden they realise that, hang on, I can serve here, I can serve here, I'm gifted in this area, and all of a sudden they see the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but also the leadership gifts on their life begin to come out and begin to flourish. I just can't wait to see young lives changed, but more importantly, to see nations and cities changed through unbelievable churches. Yeah, that's amazing. I can't help but thinking like the reason this is possible is because of what has already been sown and the mm. platform that has been laid in Australia that we in Africa are able to build upon that. And so we honour what has happened there. Mm. But I also feel like not only are we building on what has been sown prior, but we're actually going to be able to leave a legacy for the future generations. Yeah. And that's why I think this is absolutely incredible because we're part of something that is way bigger than ourselves. I want to ask um, Lee, the, the relationship between the college and church, I think that is one of the things that is most unique about Hillsong <laughs> College is as much as it's theological training, uh, at you know the highest standard there is, it's also very practical and it's yeah. also very much about uh, you know real life leadership and development in connection with a local church. So often you go to a college and it's separate from church or you do church leadership. But I love that what we're able to do is bring those yeah. two together. Like I said earlier, Pastor Brian said I see a church with a world class college. He doesn't see a world-class college hoping there's a church somewhere in there. And, uh, and, and that's everything that we're about. Our college is seated within a church community. It functions within a church community. Uh, I say this all the time. Jesus said, I will build my church. He didn't say, I'll build my college. 
And so everything about our college is to disciple young lives. And again, we, I say this often at Hillsong College, we are about education, but more than that, we're about discipleship. Jesus didn't sit his disciples down for three years and put them in a classroom. He did life with them. He walked the streets with them. He showed them the way God sees, the way God speaks, the way God acts. And that's what I love about Hillsong College. You can be in the classroom, uh, say for the morning, but then in the afternoon, you're in one of the ministries throughout our church, getting involved, seeing you know some of the theory that you learn in the morning and starting to put it into practice in the afternoon. Obviously, it's totally committed to weekend services. And, uh, and, you know, from my point of view, it's one of those things that I think from a college point of view, I, I honestly believe that you get in that environment and all of a sudden you begin to see the way God sees the church and you begin to act, you begin to speak. And all of a sudden you see the church go from, you know, what the Bible says, strength to strength, glory to glory. And that's what we're about. We are not separate from the church. We are the church. Our college is the church. And we're looking to continue to plant campuses, to reach nations in Jesus' name. And what we also see with the college is that uh, students do come from other churches. And we always have had a vision and continue to have a vision to champion the cause of the local church. So obviously we're building what God has called us to build, but we also want to encourage and uplift other churches And there are many students who come to our college in Australia and obviously now in Phoenix as well, who are from other churches. And we're believing that'll happen here as well, that there'll be students who may be part of other churches who come and get trained and go back to their church or, you know, whatever their denomination or or group is and help to build that. We want to be a resource to the greater church. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I mean, everything we do, you know, Pastor Brian says uh, we're called to champion the local church. And, uh, And so when it comes to the church, I mean, Hillsong Church is passionate about the church. We're not only passionate about Hillsong Church, we're passionate about the greater church right across the earth. And, uh, and that's where Hillsong College, you know, uh, in Sydney, we've, we've got 60 nations represented uh, in college in Sydney. And so they come from all different denominations, all different theological persuasions, all different expressions in the body of Christ, but it's still the body of Christ. And they come, they sit in, they get involved, and then they go back and work out how to now cultivate that and develop that within their own environment. And again, I believe that Hillsong College, it's all about the church. And yes, you're going to learn certain doctrines, certain beliefs, certain persuasions, but ultimately we're about the community, we're about seeing the Holy Spirit continue to transform lives and continue to take the church on from strength to strength. You know, I really believe that. I believe that this... Hillsong Africa College is going to be that kind of resource for churches across Africa. The church is going, we've got some amazing young people. Where do we send them? And my prayer is that they'll go, man, let's send them to Hillsong College Africa. We know they'll get trained up. We know it'll sharpen them. And then they'll go back to their church and help that particular church to grow. And uh, the plan is that we start in 2021. Uh, so next year with the virtual Uh, college, which we've established uh, already, something you guys have been working on during the lockdown so people can uh, become part of that and we'll send out all the information. And then uh, 2022 is when we plan to launch uh, the actual on-the-ground college. So we've got about a, a, you know, a bit under 18 months (laughs) run up to that. But the virtual college, we're going to get established now. And, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll just take it in increments and, and build it. Um, but we, we're really excited about it. And you've got to start somewhere. And so we're putting the vision out there now. We're announcing it now. We're believing our church will get behind it. Um, but we can't underestimate the challenge of building a college either, can we, Lee? No, absolutely. But we're ready for it, you know. And obviously, 18 months, well, God can do miracles in 18 months. And so, uh, so you know... Uh, I'm kind of like handing it over to God. And as long as I stay close to Him, we're going to accomplish this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing. Well, we're excited. So thank you, Lee. Thanks for being with us. Uh, God bless you. you. Yeah, you too. Bless you. Well, it's awesome to hear from uh, Lee Burns and uh, talk to him about Hillsong College Africa. But what we thought would also be really cool is to talk to some of the college alumni, some of the African students... 
uh, who went to college in Sydney and are now back and part of our church and their experience. Uh, we've got some amazing people here uh, with us and uh, so good to, uh, to have them connected to us. We've got Priscilla uh, Van Ruen. I'm not sure if I... because Priscilla is not South African, but she married a South African. And we have Enoch, uh, who is uh, up in Nairobi and was part of college. Uh, and we have Zico and Aggie, who are part of our Stellenbosch location, who are also in college uh, in Sydney. And then we have Bianca, who with her husband, Christian, uh, lead our Centurion location. Maybe let's start with uh, Bianca. Uh, when did you go to college and how did it impact your life? I was in college from 2012 to 2014. So I did the um, advanced diploma in ministry. Obviously I was a part of our church in Century City before I went to Australia, but I think I had this conviction to build church. And I knew that God had a calling on my life to lead, but it was really putting the meat on the bones. It was, it was actually getting that uh, theology that I needed to um, really meet with my conviction. So I had a conviction, but I just didn't know what my next step was. Was. And so, you know, I just think from the classes that I did, like apologetics and church history and world religions, um, those have really served me now because I had no idea that I would be leading a location, which is just the hugest honor and privilege with my husband, Christian, and I'm um, to actually be able to lean on some of those moments in college. Some of the things that we learned has been the hugest blessing for me. And I, I think that when you're actually studying, you don't realize how much you're absorbing until you're on the ground. And so for me, definitely the, the study part of it was a huge asset. And so I think we can't underestimate the power of, of studying the Bible and getting great people around you to learn and grow. But I do also just think that being on the ground and learning some of our incredible culture uh, blessed me so much so I could come back with great perspective. And so, yeah, I know that it's going to bless so many people. Amazing. Um, Enoch, you obviously are in Nairobi, in Kenya. Um, you'd never been a part of Hillsong until you went to college. And uh, obviously you went to college in Sydney and got stirred and were like, man, I want to build Hillsong Church in Africa. Tell us a bit about that journey for you. Yeah, it was a, it was a crazy journey at the time. Uh, before I went to college, I was in the States. I kind of grew up in the States. And a time came where I found out about Hillsong College and even and then started to consider about going to Bible college. And I just thought I would do it for just a season, uh, just something that, that I wanted to experience and see what it was. But one of the things that really stood out to me when I first went to college was this statement that we believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And that just blew my mind. The idea that I was in this environment where people truly believed that I could be part of something significant. And over time in college, I started to believe that myself. I started to believe that I could actually be part of something uh, that was much bigger than myself, that could actually not only transform my life and enable me to grow in faith, but could transform a continent and a nation. And so for me, that's what college was. It was this incredible journey of growing in faith, uh, in what God was doing and wanting to do uh, in and around me. But not only that, but what he wanted to do in the place where, you know, where I, I was born and I wanted to be part of that. So that's what led to me coming back to Africa and coming back to Kenya and just being passionate about seeing God do something significant here. I love how college stirred your heart for, in a sense, your, your homeland, where you were, were born and, you know, you'd, you'd been in the US, and, but, but college stirred you about this passion to do something in Amazing. Africa. And that's what we're believing. That's why we're establishing college uh, in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, a question? Well, as I'm looking at all of these guys, I look at them and I think these guys are like world-class leaders. And I actually believe that. Mm. And I believe the 
um, future of their life, they haven't even hardly begun yet. And I do think, as we say, the best is yet to come for all of them. But I get excited about this because I think of the continent and the leaders that are going to rise up because of the ability to launch a college in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and so that actually super excites me. And I think the calibre of people that God is going to raise up for our nation, our continent is amazing. So Zico and Aggie, absolutely extraordinary leaders, have been the hugest asset in running the youth ministry at our um, Stellenbosch location and really carry a lot of what happens there week to week. So maybe you guys tell us how college has impacted you and um, the difference that it's made for your lives. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Pastor Phil and Lucinda. I mean, for, for myself and Aggie, I think, or oh, just speaking for me, um, I think the power of our college is actually that it's attached to a, a church. Um, I think we're not only are we just a Bible college teaching the theology or teaching world religions or teaching um, ethics or whatever we get involved in, I think the power of it really comes from the church that we are a part of. And I mean, oh, you, you have to look no further than Pastors Brian and Bobby, Pastors Phil and Lucinda. Um, uh, I think the heart of it is that, hey, we are here and we are plugged into a local community, into a local church. And I think the power for me was that I got to see what being in ministry looks like firsthand in a church. And so um, I, I think I have a lot of friends that also went to different Bible colleges and I felt like coming out of college, it, I really had a sense of what it would take to be in ministry, what it would take to be married in ministry, what it really would take. Because firsthand, day in, day out, I got to see what leaders do, how they lead their teams, how they run their ministries, how they preach. And it's not just a, a head knowledge thing. College really was a vocational education. That's kind of what we call it. But that's really what it was for me. When we went over, we were like 19. So we were super young. College really helped me in the sense of just to find out really what I believe, like what my convictions are. Who is it that I want to be in this world? What is it that I want to contribute? Because I think so many times we just go along with what, what's out there, but it actually helped me to challenge me to the core of who is it that I want to become? And that's what I love. Whenever we walked into class, it was never about what's going on, but they were always challenging us to who is it that you're going to become? Like, who is it that you're going to, what are you going to bring to the world? What are you going to bring to the table? Because God has called you to so much more. And I love that. Like Enoch said, they believed in us and they actually put that in us because I never believed that I could bring something to the table. But going to college, I was encouraged that, that I did have something that I could bring. Yeah, That's oh, amazing. It's fantastic. And Priscilla, uh, you're on our staff uh, in our human relations uh, HR uh, people team. Tell us a little bit about your journey and the impact college had on your life. Yeah, sure. Um, I actually grew up in Indonesia. I was born and raised there. Um, I moved to Australia when I was 17. And um, by the time that I heard about Hillsong College, I was actually part of our Hillsong Melbourne. Um, I, I served there I was at, as a university student. And um, right after university, I actually went into the corporate world and um, worked for some time. Um, but then I felt this you know, feeling that I, I really, really wanted to go to college. And I didn't even know why, because I, you know, I, I landed quite a great job. I just had a feeling that this is the right thing to do. And when I came to college, I was really, like my mind was really blown away because I never, um, like Aggie said, I found, I actually found myself. I found my core values, my purpose, my mission. And um, yeah, like it, college actually even empowered me to find my niche in um, people development, which fueled me to study even further, get my master's degree in leadership. And, um, you know, and college also introduced me to my husband. And um, here I am now um, in the continent of Africa. Um, and yeah, really, just really excited to just apply what I learned in college. And I see so much potential in leaders in this country. And um, yeah, I cannot wait to see what God has in store for the leaders in um, Africa. Yeah, I, I love that. And I love that God has a way of bringing people here to help. I love hearing the stories of people saying, you know, I want to bring the best of what I have to help build this nation and to help build this continent. And we believe, you know, Hillsong College Africa is really going to play a part in unlocking that potential, yeah. you know, unlocking that goal mm. that is within. We, you know, don't have much more time. I just want to ask Enoch, um, you know, I think the announcement of Hillsong College Africa, when you hear that, what does that mean for you? 
I think it's just incredible in regards to what we can actually be able to do in our continent. I remember the challenges that I had in regards to getting to Australia, uh, you know, having a Kenyan passport. I remember having to take a whole year like of trying to apply for visas, trying to go through all these things. And I think it just, uh, it's just another way where we can be able to create opportunity for people who may otherwise not be able to have that kind of space or that kind of place where they can develop their God-given gifts uh, and be able to be part of something really and truly significant. Uh, our continent is filled with leaders, and I believe that they're going to actually be going through that college and, and be the ones that transform our, our continent and our nation. Yeah, Amazing. it's awesome. I love that. I, I love what you say there about, uh, you know, there are so many leaders in Africa, so many young leaders, and, and even just the practicalities of visas and things like that, that we want to make this easier. We want to create pathways for for young African leaders mm -hmm. to really step up and to step into, you know, the, the, the God opportunities before them and to, you know, to lead what our church and, and other churches look like in the future. And so we're, we're really believing that this is uh, another way of connecting, uh, you know, potential with opportunity. So thank you guys. Uh, we, you know, we love you all. You're all a blessing to our church. You all carry so much and you're all just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, as I look at you guys uh, into all that God has for you. And we're believing in the future uh, you guys are an example of the thousands of, of faces and thousands of voices and thousands of lives that will come through uh, our college and have an impact across Africa and across the world. So uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And uh, awesome, hey? Exciting. Amazing. Well, guys, how exciting. Uh, this news that we are launching Hillsong College Africa and I couldn't be more excited. And I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you when it comes to giving and generosity with our Half of the House Miracle Offering coming up on September 27th. And I ask that you bear with me, listen to, to this, let it, uh, I pray, get in your heart and your spirit. I'm only gonna take a few moments here. The first thing I want us to do is actually read from God's Word. We're gonna look at 2 Corinthians, both in chapter 8 and chapter 9. And, uh, you know, Paul writes here the Corinthian church, but he uses the Macedonians as this example that is like, couldn't be, wouldn't be expected. No one thought they would be the example of givers and generosity, and yet he uses them. Uh, and he, here's what's written, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, we want, to know, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. So there is a grace on giving. There is a grace to give. In the midst of very severe trial, maybe they were going through a pandemic, who knows? Their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Can you believe that? Extreme poverty and overflowing joy. I mean, those things don't normally go together. And yet here, it says the Macedonians, they were poor, but they were joyful. There was something different about them. There was something contrary to this world about them. And what happened when that joy in the midst of poverty welled up, it became rich generosity. Uh, for I testify, as Paul writes, that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Paul's like blown away by their generosity entirely on their own. So he's saying no one forced them. No one cajoled them. No one kind of manipulated them. This is just something that was in them. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. They said, we want to be part of that. We want to, we want to be included. Pick me, pick me, pick me. They were just like, please, we, we don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Verse 5, it says, And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. And I'm praying that our gifts, our giving, what comes in through our half of the house is going to exceed our expectations. I want to go on and read now 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 and then we're going to look at a few things really quickly. But I pray it's going to really help you, all of us, as we prepare our hearts for this uh, miracle offering. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Remember this, 
Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. There's something powerful about giving to God that, uh, that lives on beyond ourselves. Uh, and that's what this is talking about. Verse 10, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And that's the ultimate plan of our giving that God uh, is thank, that, that people say, you know what? God has been good, God has provided, God has blessed us. And I know that will be, and that already is our testimony and our story. There are many who say, thank God uh, for the people of Hillsong Church and, and what they have done. And I pray that story is only going to continue and become richer and stronger and more significant, that there will be people in countries across Africa who will say, thank God for the people of Hillsong Church because they have given and it has changed my life. They have given and it has transformed my family. They have given and it has lived on. It has impacted not just my life, but the lives of many, many others. That is, that is my prayer. So three things from this about giving. Number one, giving is not about an amount, but a mindset. Giving is a mindset. Uh, Paul uses the, the Macedonians as his example. They were not wealthy people. Uh, and it's amazing how the Bible, a significant biblical example of giving is the Macedonians who were in poverty. Why would Paul used them. I think because it's not normal. It's a mindset that is contrary to the thinking of this world. In a world that is often withholding, particularly in a season we're in right now, thinking I got to defend, I got to protect, I got to look after my, what's mine. God always challenges us to live beyond ourselves and to live generously. Jesus said it like this in Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus is stirring us to be generous hearted people. This is a mindset. It's a way of thinking. It's not about an amount, but it's about what's going on in our heart and in our mind. Then, then the second thing is, so number one, it's a mindset, not an amount. Number two, it is an issue of the heart. In uh, verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul writes, Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I want to encourage you, all our church, don't ever feel manipulated like you have to. Please let it come from a place in your heart, a place where your heart is stirred. As we've been sharing and talking about and we'll continue to talk about, we have a vision we believe God has set before us to build a church that is going to help build a nation and a continent. We are doing our practical best to take it step by step, whether it be to feed um, those who are poor amongst us and those who are needy amongst us, whether it be lifting the lives of people through our innovation hub and through all we do in every one of our locations, whether it be the establishment of other locations, whether it be, as we announced today, the establishment of Hillsong College Africa. We are all about this strategy of lifting the lives of people, which we believe the gospel message of Jesus, the good news is all about. But it's going to require all of us to play our part. You know, we, we believe in God for a facility in Johannesburg uh, for our Hillsong College Africa. Uh, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna buy a building or, or land and build something that we believe will be beautiful uh, and iconic and, and we're gonna resource this facility. Uh, so guys, we, we've got a big vision before us and uh, we need to do what we can to contribute towards that. And I pray your heart is stirred 
I pray your heart is stirred as you consider what it is that we are part of. And that's what happened with the Macedonians. It's like they heard what was going on and they said, please, please, we want to be part of it. Whatever we can do, it may not seem like a lot, but we're going to do something. And I know uh, those who are, who are listening, who are watching, who are joined with me today, you know, we can all play our part. Some of you can do a whole lot more. Uh, and God's stirring your heart in that regard. Some of you are uh, going, man, I, I don't know what I can do, but I'm going to do something. God, uh, I pray that you'll, you'll, you'll be with me and I, as I do this. But it's got to come from that heart that says, I'm in, I'm part of this. And finally, there is a spiritual power to our giving. It is not just a natural thing. It may seem very natural to, you know, type in and send the... Uh, the you know the the amount via EFT or whatever, but there's something spiritually powerful about that moment. We are a generous church. We've always been, and we always will be. Our story begins in Sudvata, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next co- coming weeks. Where there were refugees, uh, African refugees from xenophobia attacks, and before we launched service. We were in there serving, helping, blessing, providing for those people. We are and we always will be a generous church. Our desire, whatever city we go into, we're believing to be in uh, 50 most influential cities across Africa with 50 churches impacting 5,000 people. It's a 50-50 vision. It's huge. It may live beyond ourselves, but we're going after it. But in order to see that come to pass, in order for that to happen, Uh, It's got to come from a generous heart. And we always believe that we are there to serve the city. The city is not there to serve us. And that is a a spiritual commitment that we have. We want to serve whatever city we go into. There's a spiritual power attached to our giving and our generosity. And Proverbs 11.24 in the message, it says it like this. And let me leave this with you. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. And I pray your world, is going, to, is going to increase. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. We, we don't wanna be people who withhold. We wanna be people who live large and generous lives. We are believing our church is going to grow and expand, not because we withhold, but because we're generous, because we're generous hearted people, because we believe that God's economy is not a buying and selling economy, uh, as I heard one of my pastor friends speak recently, but a sowing and reaping economy that we sow and we reap. Our lives are enlarged as we give and contribute together. So I pray that your heart is stirred and that like the Macedonians, what we give together is gonna blow our minds because what God has called us to is bigger than any one of us. It's bigger than me and Lucinda and our whole team, but we're gonna take this on, this vision step by step as we have been. And we pray that you'll be on this journey with us. So, hey, why don't we pray together? Father God, we just thank You that we can be part of Your church, this church that You are building, Your beautiful church filled with beautiful, amazing, incredible people, all different kinds of people from many different cultures, many different backgrounds coming together, Lord, to build Your church to see the lives of people transformed, to see nations uh, turned around. God, we're believing to see a continent impacted uh, through Your church with the good news of Jesus. We thank You, Lord, this, this vision You've stirred within our heart of Hillsong College Africa. Lord, may it become a reality. And I pray as people are preparing to give that, Lord, their hearts would be stirred today in Jesus' Name, that we're gonna see a miracle uh, as we give September 27 in our lives, in the, in the gifts that we give. And Lord, across your church in Jesus' Name, Amen. God bless you, church. And I pray your heart is stirred and your faith is high, just as it is for me, for Lucinda and for our team. Guys, I wanna take a moment just before I hand back to Aggie uh, and, and Zico and pray with people who you're joined with us, but you're away from God. And uh, today, I believe uh, this is your opportunity to make your peace with God. And I'd love to pray with you a simple, but I believe a powerful prayer uh, that begins this new life with your Heavenly Father. A prayer of salvation, a prayer that says, Jesus, Son of God, forgive me. 
Give me a brand new start. And I believe that's exactly what He'll do wherever you are joined uh, with us in this moment, whether you're at home or wherever you might be, you know, I believe that God's meeting you right where you're at. And so if you need to pray this prayer, then you do it. And we're going to pray this right now. And maybe you're with a friend, maybe you're with a family member uh, and you're saying, hey, we want to pray this together. Uh, or you want to pray this uh, with somebody, you know, if they're with you, you know, you can hold their hand or whatever and just let's, let's pray together. And I believe uh, that this is going to be the beginning of you stepping into this brand new relationship with God. So let's pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Son, Jesus. Thank You for everything He's done for me. And right now, I open my heart and my life, everything I am, and I give it to You. I thank You from this moment, I am forgiven. I'm a child of God. I'm leaving the past behind and I'm walking forward into my future with Jesus as my Lord and as my Saviour. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer uh, from your heart, we'd love to hear from you. And there's a little button there uh, that you can click uh, saying, hey, I made a decision. And if you click on that button, uh, we'll send you something. In fact, what we'll send you is a beautiful 21 page uh, online devotional. We'll send it straight to your email and you can get that. And it's 21 pages that represent 21 days uh, walking with God. And so just as you've prayed that prayer and that's the beginning, we'd love to help you, you know, on the next step of really understanding this prayer and understanding what it means to walk with God. And so this beautiful little uh, good news guide will help you with that. So you can only, you know, that can only happen is if you let us know. So click on that button, let us know, and we'll send that to you. And if you need prayer, we'll pray with you and just help you however we can, because uh, we're all on this journey together. And we know that God is with you and we say well done uh, in this moment and uh, God bless. Hey, what an adventure you have just begun with Him. What an amazing message by Pastor Phil. I just love him when Pastor Phil preaches. It's like wisdom everywhere. It's like all over you. It's like, thank you I so much. It. It's always good. Thank you so it's much, Pastor good. Paul, for that amazing message. And hey, if you did make that decision at the end that Pastor Paul was uh, leading us in as a church, um, we want to let you know that there, uh, you can press the Jesus button. And the Jesus button is for us to connect with you, to let you know what the next steps are to make that decision. You've just started your Christian journey or you've just recommitted your life to Jesus. And so the best is yet to come. There's so much exciting things ahead. And so let us know if you've made that decision. So we as a church can connect with you. And let us know, uh, babe, tell them and how hey, else they if can... You, if you want to join a group, hey, why don't you press the Get Connected button? Because we don't believe anyone should do this life alone. And you know what? My life has been so blessed since we've been in a group. Since being married to me. Oh. <laughs> since we've been oh. in a group. Hey, the group is... The group, group has changed my life. Yeah. And so if you aren't in a group, press that button. We will get in contact with you and we will place you in the best group possible for you. But babe, what an amazing Sunday that was. I know. The big announcement. I know. I'm so excited. You, you changed pretty quick. From yes, from the Zoom. Yes, to here. from the Zoom to here. What an amazing Sunday that was. What I an know. amazing announcement. We are so excited for everything that I is ahead. I don't think I can sleep tonight. Like. I, I'm too excited. I'm too excited. And so, man, what an exciting time ahead for our church. Yes. Hillsong Africa. What an I exciting know. time ahead for Hillsong Africa. We're so excited. But hey, thank you guys so much for joining us for church today. May the Lord bless you keep you and cause His face to shine upon you. May you have the best week ever and we'll see you back next week for Church on the Line.